It's 8.35 now. There are more than 3 million cases of PAD diagnosed in the U.S. every year. And there are things you can do, though, to reduce your risk. Joining us this morning uh, to talk about that is Dr. Brenton Quinney. He's a vascular surgeon at Brookwood Baptist. And you're educating us on PAD. First, we should explain to people what PAD is. Sure, I appreciate you letting me come here. Absolutely. Peripheral arterial disease is blockage in the blood vessels, typically of the legs, that reduces the blood flow down to the legs, can cause symptoms of pain when we're walking, uh, in the calves, cramping of the calf muscles, to more severe cases where you can have pain in the foot at night, having to hang your foot off the side of the bed to get better blood flow down to the foot, or ulcers or wounds that are not healing up in the most severe cases. All right, uh, you know, my father's actually dealing with this right now, but uh, is, is it normally happen in older people, or is it can happen at any age? It can happen at any age, but it's more typically in patients that are uh, more elderly, greater than 65 years of age, is when we typically see it. Now, is, is this an isolated condition, or are usually other factors contributing? to getting it? There are other factors, so you know, diet, high cholesterol diet, uh, smoking obviously is a very high risk, high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, uh, things like that are, are causes of peripheral arterial disease. Yeah, the last one I'm not uh, too crazy about the genetic part, so hopefully I don't have to deal with that, but uh, so when in terms of diagnosis, is this something simple and easy to get diagnosed? It can be. The first thing is obviously just a good history and physical examination with your physician where we will check routine pulse examination. It gets a little more advanced beyond that if there's a suspicion of peripheral arterial disease and we do non-invasive tests first with blood pressures to our feet and we do ultrasound examinations looking at the flow level of uh, blood flow down the legs. It gets more invasive obviously beyond that if we think there's a diagnosis of peripheral arterial disease. How involved is the treatment and is, it, is normally treatment successful? Uh, it can be, yes, and as vascular surgeons, we tailor the care to our patients. So we can do minimally invasive uh, studies such as arteriograms where we do x-rays of the blood vessels and we can treat things with little rotorooters, balloons, or stents for minimal types of problems. It gets much more advanced for patients with severe peripheral arterial disease where we're worried about amputation where we can do things such as surgical bypass around blockages where we take veins or prosthetic grafts to go around, bypass, or go around blockages. I, I'm going to assume success rate depends, you know, it's, it, it's, it depends on each case. I mean, each individual case and it stands on its own merit in terms of whether or not it works, right? Correct. Yeah. It depends on the case. It depends on the level of blockage and the severity and what treatment process is required. Well, maybe somebody's out there thinking, well, maybe I have this condition. I haven't gone checked yet. I'll go get it checked out. Maybe they think they have an advanced form of this condition. Does that, could that possibly mean amputation? It can be. It's very low risk for patients that just have pain in the legs when walking. That's very low risk of amputation. But when we get to the more severe stages, the pain at night that you're hanging your feet uh -huh. off the side of the bed or ulcers, the amputation rate goes up significantly. So we get very concerned and very aggressive at revascularization at that point. All right, well, and you, you mentioned already some of the procedures and treatments. Uh, how advanced have we become, though, in this field in terms of trying to treat this? Very advanced, and we're able to, as vascular surgeons, we're able to augment and able to work in conjunction with not only minimally invasive techniques, but then more surgical, traditional open revascularizations to treat these patients. Yeah. All right, well, hey, if you think you might have these uh, symptoms, uh, definitely get it checked out as soon as you can. Doctor, thanks so much. Thank Good information. You.